always been the Norse job, isn't it, to terrify the safe. <laughs> The Labour Party are in shock because they've got away, especially the blowouts, we're not listening to the working class people for so long. I mean, when everybody's earning a good amount of living, it doesn't matter who comes in the country, is it? The first person you blame, you know, when yeah, you shit it's the fan wrong, and you've yeah. no money, is it? You know, the, you know, was the Irish at one point, when it was the West Indians coming over? The, the immigrant always gets it. A lot of things with this town have not been right, what, what's been done. It's, it's the unemployed who are getting screwed. You know, they make programmes like Benefit Street, mm. what vilify them, so make the, it makes the, tax, the good honest taxpayer watch him want to kick his television in because he's providing for these lazy bastards. Hey everyone, welcome back to Political X. For more knowledge and updates on UK, European and US politics, make sure you subscribe to this channel. One of the things we heard time and time again about Brexit was that things were going to improve by us leaving. Then, when reality struck, we heard a complete flip around saying that's not what we voted for, we voted for an improvement. But it's interesting when you listen to people from a few years back talking about the issues of why they voted Brexit or were going to vote for Brexit, they wanted improvements. They wanted improvements in libraries, schools, hospitals, GP appointments, the police, reduction in crime. They wanted improvement in all areas, and they felt that a simple way of doing it was to remove people coming in because that would free up access that they need to certain services. One of the reasons I made this series of Brexit regret was just to document why people were starting to change their minds. And I think one of the biggest things that are causing people to change their minds is that actually things are going to get worse. And we're seeing that with shortages, with the hit to the economy, with inflation increasing, and with the government saying, we're not going to replace the funding you got from the EU. You're on your own. It's not up to us to save you, it's to you to save yourselves. And this is the exact same rhetoric we heard from the Thatcherite government from Margaret Thatcher during the 1980s. So I found some interesting statistics to show that actually people want to remain or now rejoin the EU. We're in. Well, let's have a look at how the country has changed geographically. Now that's how things looked back in 2016. You'll see the, the blue areas are leave, the yellow are remain, you see Scotland, Northern Ireland, it is transformed. Look at that. Wales has gone, remain. The South West has gone, remain. Whole swathes of the North East. Now that poll was done in 2018 and it's amazing to hear Nigel say, wow. And wow indeed. There is a lot of regret and it's going to grow. The economy is not going to improve. It is not going to help the lives of those in need. It's not going to improve the police service, the doctors, the NHS, the libraries, the schools. Everyone has been sold a lie, and the simplest thing is to just point at foreigners and suggest they're the ones causing the problem, when they were literally the ones, with the NHS at least, keeping us alive. I voted leave because of the NHS. I just can't believe I fell for it. Manipulated. Wasn't I? Well and truly. I wonder how many more. People say to me about the 17.4 million people voted for this and that's what they want. I'm one of those 17.4 million and that is not what I want. That is not what I voted for. I want my vote back. I've had my vote stolen. I think it was uh, Nigel Farage says the other day that if there's no point in having another vote because it'd be even more leave now than it was before. No, you know that it wouldn't, and that's why you don't want us to have it. Now, well, the next clip is an interesting one, it was during the actual referendum that someone completely switched, pulled out of the Leave camp, moved into the Remain camp, and the reason was the NHS. The important thing is to consider all aspects of this, not just the renegotiation, 
but ultimately, is, the, is Britain going to be better off, particularly for me as the chair of the Health Committee and someone who came into politics campaigning about health? Ultimately, as well, I have to ask myself, is the NHS going to be better off or worse off? So I think it would have been far worse for me not to be honest about the fact that having now looked at the big picture, I honestly think that it's the right thing to do to vote to stay. Let's have a listen to Tory MP Neil Parrish talk about his Brexit regrets. The Conservative Party, and I'll be quite blunt, um, we, have, we are normally a pragmatic party that gets on with government. So it's no good just saying, yes, on, in principle, we don't want any imported labour, we should have enough of our own, but we don't. You know, we, we, we're a million, we reckon we're a million workers short with the ones that have returned from, to, to Europe and people that have decided to retire after, after COVID. If they decide to do that, that's up to them as a lifestyle. So, you know, for goodness sake, you know, I, I am just seeing a great in industry and, and great animal welfare being put at risk by the fact we don't have the workers. And I think most people, whether they voted Remain, whether they voted Brexit, they're really not interested anymore. What they're interested in to make sure they got meat on the shelves, good quality meat. Our farmers need to get it into the processors. Otherwise, you know, a lot of egg production is being stopped at the moment. A lot of broiler production is being reduced. So all the time we're exporting uh, and or importing more, exporting our business. Exactly the opposite that what Brexit was to deliver. Now let's have a listen to some regrets. August 19, Boris came to the fish key, shook hands with my son and I, and told us, brilliant, we're out. You guys are going to get so busy, you're going to have to employ more staff because the Europeans are going to be desperate for our fish. And then we said that in front of all of us. Well, he's right. We have had to take on more staff, not to sell more fish, to handle the paperwork, to, to do the admin, and sales have dropped 40%. The days we can trade have halved, and at the end of the, the, at the, end of the day, me and many, many others will go back. Hi, James. Yes, thanks for letting me join in. You're very welcome. Um, I really... <laughs> I really need your help. I, I voted to leave. Uh, the reason I voted to leave mainly was bureaucracy. You know, I'm, I'm paying money to my parish council for stuff and yes. county council and the rest goes to the government. Now I'm paying somebody else for stuff. Um, but in the last six months or so, I've really sort of come round to, you know, big mistakes. You know, the way this has been badly negotiated, we're going to get a poor deal. We might just as well remain in, but... What has really uh, confused me, James, this is where I need... them, the cost of Brexit is rising. New rules on the export of shellfish has left this business 50% down already. But the post-treaty disputes are making things worse. As a row over fishing rights escalated, so too did threats from the French. James's buyers got nervous. He's had over £20,000 worth of orders cancelled this week. Fishing was the reason he voted for Brexit. The reality, he says, is not what was promised. The deal we got was very, very poor, very poor. So I probably would change my vote if, if I'm honest. Do you feel that the government have let you down? I think, in a word, yes. Absolutely fine. Uh, it's, it's interesting you're saying about um, unicorns and uh, fact-checking, because... I'm guilty of buying a unicorn and not wait, checking. You, you're uh, not, the fact. mate. Forgive me for splitting hairs. Um, I'm doing a quick fact check already. You're not guilty of buying a unicorn. You, you <laughs> might have bought a promise of a unicorn, but you certainly uh, didn't buy a unicorn. I'm certainly, yeah, I'm certainly hoping that's, um, <laughs> that we get the chance to do something about this. Um, really? I, I am um, like a lot, a lot of people. Um, I cast my vote in 2016. I was an ardent Brexiteer, and I cast it in good faith that bringing probably what I believe to be the the chance to, uh, you know, make our own laws back in this country again. And yeah. I, I believe we'd, you know, be able to form our own trade deals and it would somehow make our country better. And yes. I believed the politicians, and I used to watch a lot of debates with, um, late night debates with Giselle Stewart, yeah. Andrea, Leds Andrea Ledson on the, the Leave campaign. It really spoke to me. I thought, wow, we could actually prosper should we leave the European Union and set our own path. But it's took me, what, two and a half years since the vote, but it's took me a long, long time to realise that I, you know, I, I bought a dud. I want my money back, James. 
When, when did you, when did the it, needle start to move? What would, can you remember, or has it just yeah, been it's, incremental? It, 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 it's yeah, it's. I'm, I'm one of these people, you know. I, I go on social media. I well, I follow Remainers and Leavers, and I, I, I sort of try to argue the Brexit case. And you know, it, people will be saying their side of the story, and I'll be saying my side. And it got yes. to the point where I was reading reading these conversations I was having with other people, and I'm agreeing with everything they're saying, and and looking at what I've written and thinking. I don't back that anymore. I just it, it's it's rubbish. What I what I was writing was just. And they are queuing up to tell you that you did vote for what's happening now, and that anyone like me who suggests that you didn't is patronising you, condescending to you, and misrepresenting you. Well, what I've what I've also had, I've had uh, several people actually turn around to me and said to me, "I bet you didn't vote Leave in the first place. You're just saying you voted Leave." You're, well, that's why we've done the whole three hours on it today. Because he, he, even yeah. if we had every everyone at Rada currently pretending to be what you are clearly telling the truth well, about, I, we wouldn't be able to fill three hours. I, I simply said to these people, you know, just literally just go back through my timeline, read my tweets. The majority of Brexit voters, well, people who voted for Brexit, when I ask them now. They don't want to talk about it. They make excuses for it. Oh, it was a poor campaign. Uh, we didn't really get a good, good full facts, you know. Why do you think that is? They've seen no progress. They've seen no, that's the thing, they've seen no progress. Yeah. Boris Johnson predicted June the 23rd to be Independence Day. We're nowhere near it. It's been over a year. I think what they've seen is just no progress. And uh, I think they see that it's not, it's not easy, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. And they've also seen the, the pound drop. The pound drop. Inflation's gone up as well. My name is Andrew. In 2016, I voted to leave, but I have now changed my mind. I will be marching tomorrow because I think it would be a democratic outrage for Brexit to happen on the basis of the Johnson deal being rammed through Parliament in 48 hours without time for proper scrutiny and without putting this deal to the people. The Johnson deal is very different from what Vote Leave promised in 2016. It also threatens the existence of the United Kingdom itself by putting a customs border in the Irish Sea, driving a wedge between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK. The people have had no chance to say if they want Brexit on these terms. The claim that it is undemocratic to have another referendum is nonsense. Even Nigel Farage, before the referendum, said that a narrow win for Remain would be unfinished business. It's just a mask to cover the fact that leavers fear that a majority now does not wish to leave, that they just want to smuggle Brexit through anyway, even against the wish of the majority. I believe the people should now have a final say. I live in Acton and ask my MP, Rupa Huck, to work with MPs from all parties to bring this question back to the people. The polls are saying that a lot of people's opinions are changing on Brexit. Some people are regretting their decision. Is that the sense that you're getting from the people around you? Yeah, definitely. I, don't, I think um, people voted on, completely voted on emigration. That was the most people. Um, anyone that I knew that voted had a very strong opinion about emigration never considered finance or what was going to happen to the country in terms of um, our manufacturing etc so yeah i think i think people have sort of lived to regret it so bearing in mind how reliant you are on eu labor what were your first thoughts when you saw the referendum result i was not like most of the people in britain expecting the result we got friday morning the phone dried up from Romania and Bulgaria. Why go to work in a country where you've been told you're not wanted? Well, at least that's how they read it. And it is difficult. We do need another source of labor from outside the EU. Russia, Ukraine, will have to come from somewhere. And we'll be able to continue growing apples and strawberries, which we do, and selling them to the British public. Good. Morning. David, how are you? Thank you very well, thank you. Nice to see you. I'm very worried that we won't find enough people in the May and June periods. What are the implications for your farm if he doesn't come through for you? Plum, no business. I might as well just drop it because if I haven't got anybody to pick the fruit, what are you going to do?
Before I show my last clip, I just want to say a big, big thank you to all my patrons. You really do help establish this channel and allow it to grow. If you too would like to become a patron of the channel, you can do so for as little as a coffee a month. And now over to what I find to be a bit of an odd clip in many respects. Not because I've selected it, but because it's a Tory MSP from Scotland complaining about Brexit and also letting all the kids know they ain't going to see any benefits in their generation. Not what was promised. Earlier on in the, this debate, um, I think it was Andrew Bowie said, why is independence is so attractive? And for me, it's just down to one simple issue, and that's Brexit. It's made it difficult and more difficult to go and study in France and Italy and get the best experience possible. Yeah, look, um, I appreciate that. Um, and I have every sympathy with uh, with uh, with with you and, 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 and everybody else coming through right now who will not have the benefits that I had um, going through Erasmus, getting to work and study abroad. Am I going to sit here and say that, that, that Brexit is perfect and that your generation is going to reap the benefits? No, I'm not, because you're, you're not, frankly, at the minute. And I... I, I can see that, um, so, but we've got work to do. Y you're saying his generation are not going to reap the benefits of Brexit? Uh, not right now. I think that... Uh, well, uh, well uh, when? Because, because of... Because of it, look, the, there are, the benefits of Brexit are going to be clear to all. Uh, very, when we develop our economy and move into uh, the wider long will world that take? in terms of trade... and How long well, will that take? Will be, it will come along very quickly. Okay. The overwhelming opportunity uh, for Brexit um, is over the next 50 years. 50 years? Not in our generation. I mean, I've also got recordings elsewhere, or I've seen recordings elsewhere, of Rees Mogg saying 75 years. It's beyond a joke. This is not what was promised. We're meant to be leveling up immediately. No one's going to see any benefits in this generation, next generation. So what's the point? On a plus note, we can see things are changing, we can see parties emerging that are going to be trying to progress this and change the current situation so we get back into the EU sooner rather than later. I hope you enjoyed my political observations this week. If you'd like to support me, please share the video with others and post about it on social media. If you're keen for more, subscribe, comment, like and hit that notification button. Thanks for listening and see you next time on Political X.